Hey guys, good morning. Today is Thursday, January 12th. Um, got done work around 7.30, had to run home, got all my fish and stuff, and I am on a, uh, oh, this is kind of like a homecoming. I'm on Valley Creek today, down in Valley Forge Park. And the reason why I say it's a homecoming is this was my home stream when I was a little kid. I grew up uh, maybe about six miles from here, and this is where I honed in all my skills, uh, just learning how to fly fish. So, um, I only get to fish it like once a year. I really only want to fish it like once a year because it's not the same stream it used to be back in the 80s when I was fishing it. So, okay, I'm um, back in the 80s I started fishing this around 1980 81 and back then there was a big PCB spill on the Valley Creek and the state stock stopping it stock stopped stocking it and um, really after that PCB spill nobody fished it nobody fished it and I, a few guys like me and at least from all the times that I used to be on the water I rarely saw anybody on the stream and there was so many fish left over after that spill. There was still today natural reproduction, but there was natural beach production of big fish back then. Um, and I fished it. I mean, it got more popular after about 83 or 84. And um, But for a good three, four years, man, this was our little honey hole. I mean, there was a lot of big fish here regularly pulling out fish between 15 and 20 inches regularly and um so and there was a lot of fish in the uh 11 to 15 inch range so um it was a great stream to grow up on it had great bug life it still does have great bug bug life but it basically turned into a native uh, a typical native trout stream like most of the fish here are about six to eight nine inches you're lucky if you catch one over 10 11 12 inches if it, it's, it's a trophy if you catch one over 12 inches now so but i still like coming and fishing it i didn't fish it last year at all um i came twice two years ago and me and a friend came here and well one time i came by myself i fished basically underneath and i just slaughtered and there were so many um geez uh, i think we we're using a like a size 22 pheasant tail and a uh, midge pupa and um when me and my friend came here two years ago we fished on top with caddises in um i think it was late april and um, i think we each caught about 30 fish each there was just so many of them so there's a ton of fish still in here but they're all like little native trout now and um so i don't know what to expect today because um uh, it seems like every year there's some kind of spill on Valley Creek and it just gets hammered also with fishermen and um, so it gets a lot of abuse but it still seems to recuperate and come back and there's still plenty of fish here so um, I had it rained pretty good yesterday and uh, I from my previous years and years and years of experience on Valley it has always fished the best after a storm and the creek is coming back down so that's what it is already peaked overnight and starting to come back down so in my experience it should be ideal today but um when i say also homecoming i'm going to try to use when i was younger i only fished on i was a nymph fisher back then strictly nymph i didn't fish dries you know in from like 12 up to like 18 years old and um I, I basically fished about three flies. I fished a shrimp, a pheasant tail, a hare's ear, and I that's pretty every now and then I would put on a dry caddis if a hatch was blowing off in my face, but um I guess fishing dries back then kind of intimidated me and so I didn't you know and I was used to catch a ton of fish just underneath, so I stayed with underneath stuff. So um, but I'm gonna go with I'm going to try to fish the stuff that I fished when I was younger. I'm going to go with shrimp. I'm going to go with a hare's ear or a pheasant tail. But I am going to throw in a midge pupa because the last time I was here, I did fish the midge pupa and put a bunch of fish on that too. So um, you have to set up your um, 
line a little differently here. A lot of short leader. I'm going to turn around, show you downstream, and you can see pretty much. You can't. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a very shallow stream. Deep is two foot. That's deep. Uh, there are a couple deeper holes, but I don't. I don't know nowadays. I mean, back then. But most of the stream that you're looking downstream at, I mean, is pretty much a foot deep. And upstream, we got some deeper stuff, maybe maybe about two and a half foot deep, um, two, two and a half foot deep, just in pockets here and there. But um, so, give it a shot today, see how it goes. Hopefully, I'll uh, do some reminiscing and um, catch some decent fish, you know, and uh, we're, I'm sure they're going to be all small, but uh, let's see what we can do today, okay? Stay with me, guys. Thanks. Okay, guys, um, just entered the water. If you guys who are familiar with the valley, I'm going to fish my way from the Iron Bridge that you're looking at right there up into the uh, Chesterbrook community. And um, <laughs> just a little story. I fished and hunted all around here, not in the park, but just in the Chesterbrook area before they were even built uh, back in 1980. I think they were built in like 83. And <laughs> me and my friend used to go around taking all the surveyor sticks out so, they, so they'd have to go and resurvey, but we used to take hundreds of them. <laughs> take the surveyor sticks out just to get another week or two or something out of the hunting and fishing uh, because uh, we got two years of it, I think, where it was just all woods and everything. And then on the, in the third year, they started, in 83, they started to build and uh, we were so upset. So we were bad boys back then. But um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start here at this hole here near this tree. And like I said, just fish, fish our way up. I'll show you my first couple casts. Um, I don't expect to set the world on fire. I got my uh, custom rod out. It's only eight and a half foot. It's an Orvis blank, a super fine blank. And um, but I had a a nice real seat put on it, and a new handle and nickel silver. Um, uh, you know, the uh, real real seat. And uh, so, but I only want to use an eight and a half foot rod here because the creek is really small and shallow, and uh, ten foot would really be too much for this stream. So, but it is a five weight because it is windy today. So I wanted to have something to flip this rig out there. So um, caught up here. Show you my what I'm using. This is the uh, Red Midge Pupa. Then we got a shrimp pattern and a little split shot and a size 20 pheasant tail. Um, so, um, so that's what we're going to try off the bat. Okay, here we go. Little native brownie on Valley Creek. And this is on the shrimp. About eight inches. Not bad, not bad for the valley. And that was on the uh, shrimp pattern. Okay. Okay, well, they're still fishing here. That's cool. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Oh, see, this one is on the, uh, <laughs> look how big this is. Maybe, maybe four inches on the, uh, Pheasant tail, bead head, little pheasant tail. Ah, look at that. That's cool. Let him go. Hey guys, I want to see what's under some of these rocks in January. <laughs> Not much. Not much. Little teeny tiny little midge larvas. Midge larvas. Ah, they're so little. I don't know if they're little micro caddis larvae or midge larvas, but I think I think they're midge larvas. Or pupas, midge pupas. Let's look under this one. 
Just under this side. And they were like green. Man, teeny tiny midge pupas. A whole bunch of them. Man, they're small, like size uh, 22s. Real skinny. Not much bigger than the uh, width of your hook. Man, oh man. There's a bigger rock here. Let's get a look at this one. Uh, I can't put it up too high. It's running down my... I see a couple stone... I see a couple caddis cases, stone cases. There's a couple real small nymphs. Hey, they're small though. Jeez, they're small. Looks like 28. I don't see any shrimp. Man, these things used to be covered with shrimp. Oh well, I'm sure there's still some here, but oh well. Heading upstream, just got those two so far. I had, no, I should say, down in this hole where I'm pointing right here, I had a nice one on, about nine, 10 inches. And only had him on for about five seconds. As soon as I turned the camera on, he got off, but he was a nice one. Okay, got one on here. This one's not bad. This one, maybe eight, nine inches. This one, nice little brownie. Not about eight inches. Huh. I got room up here. Got nice little par marks on them. And this is on the uh, pheasant tail. But no, hey, got one on everything now. This is on the uh, midge pupa. That's cool. On the midge pupa. There you go. Eh, good eight inches. Okay, caught him right underneath the, the root of that tree. Didn't hit it hard at all. Okay, let's get back here. I got a nice one on now. This one might go 11 inches. Got him up in the rifts up here. Yeah, this one might go definitely 11 inches. Woo! Oh, 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 gotta watch that limb above me. And this is on. The midge pupa skinny but now uh, probably 10 inches oh. very nice very nice now I landed four out of five I had on so far not bad been here probably about 40 minutes no Nice whole good riff right in here, so hopefully I can pick up a few more. Okay, let's get back. I see some midges flying around. A couple pools up above are pretty flat, and there's some usually some rising fish up there that even rise all year long up in those flats, so maybe we'll get some top water action. Okay, let's slowly work our way up. I got a real nice one on now. This one's a good 11 inches. I had one on Right before this, is only about a four incher. I'm using the barbless hook and uh, he just jumped right off as soon as I, I, and this is on the mid, the red midge pupa. Look at that, nice. Gorgeous. He was a good 11 inches, real skinny though, but healthy, real nice. Okay, let's go get another. Okay. I don't know if this one's a trout. This one looks like a chub. Is it? Eh. Yeah, it's a chub. Little crick chub. Oh well, what did he take? He took the midge pupa. Okay. It's a deep hole right here. It's a good two and a half foot deep. I could see some fish down in there, but they know I'm here, so surprised that one even hit. But you never know. Let's go get another one. Okay, got a nice one on here. Good, probably nine, 10 inches. Whew, you see how tight. I'm in the middle of a bush here. Let's see which one he took. He took the shrimp.
Okay. Hey. Well, we're still catching them. Oh, yeah, oh, you should see I'm trying to cast huh, in between all this stuff. This is kind of ridiculous, but you got to do what you got to do. Get these little native fish or wild fish, not native. Someone's going to correct me if I say that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, guys, that's it for me. It's close to one o'clock. I still have to drive all the way home, which is about 45 minutes and um, go to bed because I work tonight. <laughs> so, um, back on my old stomping ground. Um, didn't have a bad day. I mean, I think I landed around seven and I had about four get off. Uh, two of the ones that got off were real small. They were like four inches. And then the other two, they were nice. They were like nine, 10 inches that got off. So, um, so I guess it wasn't all in all a bad day. I only saw one of the fishermen here. Um, I didn't pick any off on top. Saw those couple midgen, tried for them, but it just put them down. I really don't even know if they were trout because uh, they, they might have been crick chubs. I don't know, but they're real small dimples. Um, but everything uh, that I did catch, I caught on my old flies like uh, that I used here before when I was just a teenager, um, shrimp. Um, pheasant tail and midge people. Well, I, I didn't use midge people when I was younger, but I knew there had to be midges coming off there. Uh, so I wanted to put a midge people on too. So, but I think I caught most of them. I caught two, two on the pheasant tail, maybe about three or four on the uh, three or four on the on the sh on the shrimp, and like two on the midge pupa. So. Uh, um, and I, like, the ones that got off, I don't know what they were on, so, um, so, I don't know, I had fun. Valley Creek's still pretty, it's still healthy, it just doesn't support any big fish. And, um, you know, at first I didn't think they were going to be spooky, but, uh, maybe the first half hour I didn't really crawl around, but then the last three hours I was crawling on my hands and knees up the spots, and don't know if it really made a difference or not, but I did it just in case. And um, so I didn't catch any fish in the slower water. Everything was at the head of, or in the riffles that was at least a foot and a half deep. Um, so um, I guess nothing really surprised me. I had a good day. Um, it rained for a little bit. Now the sun's just starting to come out, even though it's still really cloudy. They're just starting to break up now. So um, come on down, fish the valley. Um, it's challenging. It is definitely challenging. So, um, um, you know, guys closer to Philly, King of Prussia, um, Montgomery County, those areas. Uh, you have a nice little stream here. You got to take care of it. And, um, you know, I would say don't overfish it. You know, give guys their space because it is a small stream. So, I, 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 it used to be a really good section in the um, Valley Forge Park and the covered bridge, the white covered bridge, up to the Iron Bridge. And I wish I would have had time. I wish I didn't have to work today because I honestly would probably go down there and work my way up. It's probably take a couple hours though to do that. So um, it, it's probably a good, um, probably a good like uh, maybe four tenths of a mile, maybe up there, maybe half a mile, but. Um, uh, you, uh, you know, same, same set, riffle pool, riffle pool, but there, as I remember, it was really nice little riffle pools down there, so, um, you guys get a chance to fix that section too, go fish that. And, um, I stopped, um, up in Chesterbrook, I didn't get up to the Chesterbrook Bridge yet, but, um, uh, there's plenty of fish up there, up to Mill Road, so, um, I don't know, like I said, it's a nice stream, come on out and fish it, just, uh, uh, you have to be really careful fishing it, and um, um, it is like a typical little wild trout stream, so don't expect any big ones here. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for watching. See ya.